Good morning, afternoon, and evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another video. We got WrestleMania Night 2. Had a good night one. Make sure you check that out if you haven't already, as well as the Jets play tonight. Big win over the Devils. Make sure you check that out. But we got Night 2 of WrestleMania, and this was a bit of everything. Um, I do think um, I'm in the minority here. I think Night 2 is better. I do. I think there was some issues that Night 2 had. Uh, however, I think the main reason that comes down to is I wasn't nearly as high on the Charlotte versus Rhea Ripley match as a lot of people were, and I don't understand where people are coming from with people saying this is one of the best women's matches they've ever seen. I thought it was mid, just saying. Um, ending was good, but man, it was slow for the first bit. Uh, but anyways, let's get into tonight's entertainment, tonight's WrestleMania. So we start off with a boring-ass pre-show. Enough said. Going into the main show, though, we have starting off with Brock Lesnar versus Omos. I was surprised we started with this one because usually the WrestleMania likes to start off with a bang. And match two, three, and four, like, especially match two. Match two is normally the worst spot on the card, which there can be an argument made that it was that today, but I really thought they were going to do that. But I think WWE just kind of has an issue putting Brock second on the card. Um for Brock of Brock reasons. So this match, like, it was okay. It was, honestly, it's about the best, as best as a lesnar Omos match could have been. A lot of big men picks up other big men. Wow, that kind of shtick. And that's pretty much all you were gonna get. And, like, I, I found that going into this, it was, like, impossible for Omos to win because they'd be building up of, oh, look, he, he's over Lesnar. He's over Lesnar. He's over Lesnar. He's a big man because Lesnar defeat him. They even did start of the match like that, but it just it just doesn't make sense. He's way too green to be putting this guy over uh, Lesnar. Like, it just doesn't make sense. So overall, Lesnar would come out with the victory, and it was the right choice. First match of the night, solid B. It was okay. Uh, it was a passable match. The second match was boring we had there was like one spot that was like okay and it just it just didn't make sense this was let's get everyone on the card that's all this really was honestly i think they would have uh done better doing a battle royal and the winner would get a title shot at some point that would have been there would have been something that you could do because you can have ever all your wrestlers that you wanted and there would be some sort of relevancy because not only was it not relevant, it's like only one of these is like a, 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 is good enough to be a real tag team, and they ended up winning the match, of course. So that was about what was bound to happen, and it's just they just WWE at least in their their main roster, they just don't have enough uh, female tag teams. I think in the NXT division, uh, there is some potential there, but they're just not enough uh, on the main roster yet. So you'd have Liv, Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez, Natalia and Shotzi, Sonya Deville and uh, Chelsea Green against uh, Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler are the only ones, like I said, that are any sort of estab or have any sort of establishment uh, with them. So it made sense that they were to win this match. It was overall not a great match, honestly. The Lesnar Omos was probably even a little bit better, simply because. The Lesnar Omos match had those occasional wow, you know, but it was, like I said, a Brock Lesnar match and not the Brock versus Roman match for SummerSlam and not the Brock versus Cena match when he first came back, which is the best Brock match. Uh, it's not that Brock Goldberg nonsense at WrestleMania years ago. However, it was the Brock Omos nonsense of 2023. But anyways, I keep going back to that, but I shouldn't because the next match on the card was Gunther or Walter, if you're cultured, against Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. I was, I was so excited about this, and I knew this, I would be more hyped about this match and than any of the other ones, and I knew they were going to tear the house down, and what did they do? They tear the fucking house down! This match kicked so many levels of ass. Hey, asshole, it was so. the WWE Championship? You fucking lost it! Oh. Proceed. <laughs> okay. Anyways. But Gunther, or Walter, like I said, put on just an absolute... All these guys put on an absolute clinic. And what are you doing? I've never done this before. Oh, you're going you're gonna to yeah. do it. <laughs> there you go. Can you you're watch a be, movie after? Uh, I won't have time. I'm sorry. 
Uh, but anyways, the um, this yeah, this match was just truly excellent. There's a lot of good spots, very very hard hitting, exactly the way I suspected it. Sheamus was looking less white within like five seconds of the match. He does that like all the time. Though. That's like if true. Shame, like if Sheamus sweats, he loses like three shades of whiteness. Like he just goes to red. Yeah, that's his state of being. <laughs> Yeah, but this, the, oh man, there there was a few of those chops that just looked brutal. But the like the whole thing was just a slow smacking of each other. And a lot there were some people that were mad about this finish. I actually no, was, it, it I, I, I thought really it was good. good. It, I thought it was I thought it was good finish. And not only that, I thought that that was a real that last power bomb was quite a exquisite power bomb. Yes, sir. Whatever. Perfect finish because. It didn't really have a story other than we want the IC title, but also the two men's inner conflict. So up until the point when I would say, like the point where he, where Seamus, I think Drew pulls Seamus off a pin or, or the other way around and they just go. Uh, yes, Drew other. pulls Seamus off a pin. That's, that whole thing is great. Yep. And it was pretty much just Walter just resting up a bit and Walter, then right at the end right. swooping in for the victory and taking advantage of the fact that these two just can't stop fighting each other. So I think we're going to see uh, Sheamus and Drew continue to feud coming out of this mania and then I think there's a good chance that we'll see uh, you know, Gunther start possibly a feud with Brock Lesnar uh, there is there was a lot of hype possibly of that going into mania that obviously didn't happen but I think now that he's uh, you know, the Lesnar Omos feud is done and it's clear that the Sheamus Drew McIntyre feud should continue. I think this is the perfect opportunity to do that. You know, Brock Lesnar coming off a win, then going himself uh, for the IC title is a great choice and it would make a lot of sense. So I hope Triple H book it. Anyways, A plus great match. We then got into Bianca Belair, Belair versus Asuka. And this is where our predictions went straight to shit. No! Yeah, no, this... He never recovered. Yeah, no, it's one of those things where it's like, Asuka hasn't won at Mania, but I really thought she would this year because, no disrespect to Bianca Belair, she's starting to lose that thunder that she had. Not, and like, not completely, but it's starting, it's, it's one of those things where, like, the reason the bloodline thing with Sami Zayn was great was because they knew... When it got, when it was getting to the point where there needed to be progression, where Sammy would have to turn on the bloodline or the bloodline turn on Sammy, however you view that, there needed to be that progression. And for that to happen, otherwise it became a little stale. We are going to get to that later tonight. But, you know, it's an instance I feel where Belair is starting to become a little bit stale as a baby face. So we should consider possibly Belair turning heel, especially the fact that Asuka didn't tonight. And so it's one of those things where I feel like Bianca would be able to pull off solid heel work, but it's been a whole year of her title reign. Um, and I, it's just one of those things where I think they need to reinvigorate interest in it uh, in order for it to become warranted. Because let's be real here. The interest in this match was Asuka. Everyone was excited the way she was in the Elimination Chamber, the way that she, al that she almost won, the, uh, that she, you know, had a good performance in the Royal Rumble. People were like, you know, we want to see Asuka at Mania. And they made it happen through the Elimination Chamber. So it's one of those things where Asuka is going to do just fine. I thought she needed this win more than Belair. Uh, however, Belair came out with a victory. And this was a very good hard-hitting match. I think that this Belair versus Asuka match uh, was a lot better than the uh, Flair versus um, uh, Rhea Ripley match. I'm just saying it now. Uh, simply because, like... Sure, there was a good, a few good spots in that uh, Charlotte versus uh, Rhea Ripley match, but it just wasn't like it. It wasn't as hard hitting as this one. You had the the, the Bianca Belair, those feats of strength that never cease to amaze an audience, and because they're just truly uh, exceptional, Asuka with that really, really nice like Japanese strong style wrestling that we all know to love from her and Shinsuke Nakamura and like Okada and all those guys coming out of Japan, and it was just. It, it, it just feels like it, it was her time. But Belair would win. She retains the Raw Women's Championship. And then we go into our next match, which is where it seemed like Vince McMahon started to take control of the show. 
So Miz comes out, and I joked earlier in the night that Miz is going to get his ass kicked both nights of Mania because Let's Bury the Miz seems to be a thing that's been going on for like the past few years now. And honestly, I can tell that the Miz has a lot of fun with it, and honestly, he doesn't care, and he's doing great. But it's a little upsetting to me because I love The Miz and I would love to see him go on like a, another world title run. But it seems hard considering the fact that he lost to the best wrestler in the world, Shane McMahon. Oh, I broke in my leg. Yeah, Shane comes out to a decent ovation simply of why the fuck is he here? Oh, look, and then the sun. immediately it's honestly, he gave me the shades of Vince Throw McMahon it for a leapfrog in his fifties <laughs> of Vince McMahon running into the Royal rumble and popping both quads right away. And it's funny yeah. because I remember yeah. a buddy, Carter, a, a, Carter. it runs in the family, but Shane sure as shit doesn't. Yeah, exactly. But so I thought, uh, like, because my a buddy of mine was, that I was watching this with was like, you know, you know, I maybe it's scripted. Like, you know, Snoop is gonna go in. I'm like, bro, they're keeping the camera on. Uh, they're keeping the camera on the Miz. They're they're throwing up the X, and they don't want anyone to see it. Because uh, for those who are not aware, when a referee throws up the X, that means that one of your one of your wrestlers is hurt for realsies. Uh, and that he needs actual medical attention, not the bullshit guy going, oh yeah, your leg's broken. Fuck. Um, so it, it was one of those things where they were clearly trying to cover it up. Uh, I don't think the live audience is that stupid. We saw him go down. We saw the fact that you were trying to keep the camera off him. So I don't know why WWE tries to hide it, but it is what it is. And so a lot of people credited Snoop here on going, uh, continuing and going for the people's elbow. However, if you go back and watch the footage, it is clear as day that the referee tells Snoop Dogg to hit the people's elbow. And it's very clear that Snoop Dogg has never hit the people's elbow before. Those ropes didn't move a fucking inch. And so I'm not giving anything, taking anything away from Snoop Dogg for being able to do that on the fly. But the referee deserves 100% of the credit for that improvisation. She gave a moment that distracted us from the fact that there was an actual injury, so that way Shane could get the attention he very much needed. And also, she gave the crowd a moment to remember that the commentators would be able to go absolutely wild over. So I don't even know what the name of that, uh, what her name is, that referee. She gets a fucking plus for that. Excellent, excellent move on the fly. But that'll bring us to our next real match of the night, which is Edge versus Finn Balor in a hell and a cell. Every bit of this match was great, except for one thing. Again, Vince McMahon starting to take control of the show. Let the motherfucker bleed. Good God, it's not like they're blading. If they bleed the hard way, they bleed the hard way. Like, why are we trying to PG the hell in a cell match? You have the demon Versus a vampire. Oh no, there's blood. Can't stop the match. Stop it. Stop it. How dare there be blood in a match between a vampire and a demon inside of hell in a cell where freaking mankind almost died. Almost died. Now, I'm not saying that you should really encourage blood. Tony Khan, Dante Martin's fucking broken foot is on your hands. That was careless the way that Tony Khan is just letting guys just like having no leash on it. Like have those violent matches. Have it with a guy like Moxley. Have it with a guy like Hangman. Guys that know how to do it safely and have it on occasion. There's too much of it. Uh, simply when it comes to a safety thing. However, if they're already bleeding, well, it's not like he's bleeding out over the ring like Cody Rhodes when he took that freaking vicious chair shot from Sean Spears on Double or Nothing 2019. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. It was a simple, you know, a simple, he was simply bleeding the way he normally would. So really, really upset about that. I understand this whole sale of WWE sponsors. They're not going to like, fuck off. 
Like, the fact that the money is getting away in the way of the wrestling is bullshit. It is. Like, and it's just upsetting to me. And I understand that maybe, you know, people are going to be like, oh, you need blood in your matches? <laughs> it's like, no. It's not that you need blood in matches. It's that the whole thing about wrestling is that it is an excellent performance and it's best when it feels real. So when you stop what is supposed to be a brutal cage fight where these guys just can't take their hands off each other and you just have them stop wrestling because one of them, it just feels like now that all the, that hatred they had towards each other, they just don't give a shit because there's a little cut on this guy's forehead. That That's how it is. However, let's distract ourselves for a minute. Rest of that match, fucking great. This was a great use of Hell in a Cell. And this was an example about why. So first off, the Hell in a Cell is silver again. Yay, because steel is not red. Also, that red Hell in a Cell was really fucking painful on the eyes. So glad we're back to a, the classic Hell in a Cell look. Looks like this one's actually a bit more reinforced than the other ones. That's just the engineering side of me talking. However, overall, great match, great spots. That, you know, gr some good table spots. Uh, I think we should have done a little bit more with the ladder. Uh, not that we needed to have those ladders and do all these crazy stuff with it. But it's like, if you're going to bring it out, use it a little bit more. Um, but overall, this would be a solid match. And I was quite pleased. So uh, I predicted that Finn Balor would win. Although he never wins as the demon and mania. So it is what it is. So... Edge would win overall. Very, very good match. And so we would go to the main event of the evening. Roman Reigns and the undisputed championship that he has held from the beginning of time. And WWE. Oh, oh. A plus match. But, 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 but. But this was the perfect opportunity. WWE has now blown two consecutive opportunities to take the belts off of Roman. Because the thing is, is that there are so, it's not that Roman, it's bad having Roman have this long ass title reign. But why with both? WWE completely shot themselves in the foot last year when they did a title versus title where Roman was obviously going to win. There was no need for it. And now they have themselves in a situation where the thing is, is that Roman can't lose one of them because then it completely invalidates the other. If he loses the Raw, the, uh, the uh, WWE Championship and keeps the Universal, well, yeah, his Universal reign continues. However, another big part of his pedigree that he has is the fact that he doesn't lose. So that loss would weigh on him. And I've heard people talking about the idea of just like stripping one of the titles off him. But it's like, that is fucking lazy. Lazy. Good God. You guys got yourselves in this situation. So you're going to get yourselves out of this situation and do it right. They had the opportunity at Elimination Chamber. Elimination Chamber was arguably just as good as an opportunity here. Simply because of the fact that at the time, the Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens tag team thing wasn't fully built up. Now, they did a good job building that up. But the thing was, is that people wanted to see Sami win. And people would have been okay seeing Sami win. You could have had him lose one of the titles immediately after. You would have solved all your problems. Sami versus Cody would have absolutely torn the house down. And I'm not changing my mind on that. And it was a perfect opportunity because it's like, well, you know, I think he's going to lose at WrestleMania. So, you know, Roman's going to retain. But then the other half is Sammy is so fucking over, he has to win. It was so good because no one knew what was happening. It was a 50-50 split. Now, WrestleMania, grandest stage of them all. If he's not losing it here, where is he going to lose it? So now, I was so, I was certain he was losing. So I guess, you know, I guess I shouldn't have been so certain. But it's that WWE, what do you do now? Where do you go from this? So let's go through the match quickly and then I'll get towards that because I haven't actually really talked about the match itself. The match was great. Honestly, now, I thought that what the way they were going to do this was that, and they sort of did, was that uh, because they came out with Solo, I didn't think Solo would be uh, kicked from ringside. And I thought what would happen was eventually the ref would go down in some sort of incidental way. Uh, and then 
Cody would have Roman tap out or he'd go for the pin and get like to like a count of seven or some bullshit like that, but the ref would be down so it wouldn't matter. He would get up, Solo Sokoa would come in, hit with the Samoan spike, and then he goes down. He puts Roman over and he's trying to get the referee to wake up. I then was like, Sami Zayn, not even Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn comes down, battles it out with Solo Sokoa, gets him out of the ring, and then and then what's him call it? And then Roman is still down, gets him up, hits him with a halluva kick, puts Cody on top of him, and then Charles Robinson makes the run of a lifetime down the ramp, goes over one, two, three, Cody Rhodes, undisputed champion of the world. That was my fantasy booking. Personally, I think it would have been way fucking better than what happened. So let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with me. It's okay. You know, a lot of people have varying opinions. And it's okay that if you disagree with me that you're full of shit. I'm just kidding. You know, everyone's had a different appearance. But overall, it was still very good. The Usos showed up. I really wasn't sure if the Usos would show up after their loss yesterday. I really thought that they were just going to have Solo there. Uh, it was fine that they did. Um, the Usos continued to steal uh, Super Kick Parte from the Young Bucks. I'm sorry. That's the Bucks thing. Uh, you are not all elite, so you can't use it. Uh, and even then, the Young Bucks overuse it. But at least it's their thing to overuse it. You know, it's not the Usos thing to overuse it. Now it's just getting annoying. We don't need everyone to overuse it. Let let Nick and Matt Jackson be the only ones to overuse it. But overall, it was a great match. Had those two halluva kicks. Uh, had a guillotine uh, lock on uh, Cody Rhodes that just looked deadly. It was great to see him really just power out of that. Uh, it was quite... Quite something, uh, you know, and then, man, that Superman punch that Roman threw was just, oh, that looked like one of the most brutal Superman punches I've seen. And we are excluding the George St. Pierre Superman punches. Those things are fucking lethal. Um, and then a good spear uh, and one, two, three. I was, I was shocked. So we now get to the question of where do we go from here? Where does the, like the WWE has to get to a point where they dethrone Roman. And now, so I'm going to say, don't strip him of the title. Don't do it. That's fucking lazy. Don't. Mm -mm -mm. There's a lot of possibilities. There's possibly two debuts tomorrow. Uh, one of them being more of, I guess, a debut slash, a debut slash return in Matt Cordona and possibly the debut of Jay White. I'm just trying to think because you now have to build someone up to do it. And I guess either of those two guys would be big enough to do it. Uh, and if Matt Cordona comes back, come back as Matt Cordona. Do not come back as Zack Ryder. Because Matt Cordona, we're talking about the King of Death match. We're talking about a main event guy. Um, and he's fucking jacked now. So there's a real possibility that Jay White needs no introduction. Like fucking New Japan Bullet Club, all that shit. Uh, you could have him do, run a program even with AJ Styles first. Build them up. Have him beat AJ Styles. Possibly go on to face Roman. Um... I feel like realistically, WWE is going to let Roman hit a thousand days. They're going to continue that reign. And I think it ends once we have our new Money in the Bank winner. I, I think whoever wins Money in the Bank, I think is going to be possibly the one that defeats Roman. Uh, I think that uh, tomorrow we're going to see uh, the main roster debut of uh, Braun Breaker. He lost the title, uh, NXT title, to Carmelo Hayes in a very passing of the torch moment at the end. So I think off to the main roster with um, Braun Steiner, uh, but obviously he's going to be Braun Breaker still, as that's what he was in uh, NXT. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys tune tomorrow as we are going to be live streaming the Raw after WrestleMania. I'm not sure if I'll have a video on it. However, we will for sure stream it. Uh, we will be live to see the fallout of WrestleMania. So I hope you guys enjoyed, your, uh, enjoyed watching. And until next time. You take me to him! Take me to the son of a bitch! Take me to him! Come on! Go! 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 Fire!